we interviewed a, a legendary photographer chester higgins a while ago and i'm paraphrasing but he basically said he's in he has pictures of everyone right mm -hmm. from miles davis muhammad ali everybody he said Celestia had the strongest yeah. aura yes he has ever he, experienced he, yes Did you and he has a, what, is, what is that about he has um he had a photographic memory too yeah talk talk about so hold on before we get to the photographic memory why do you think you've been around a lot of people yourself too like brilliant people why is everyone talking about this aura that comes off of Celestia? certain people have it okay um i'll tell you who has it you know that i recognize instantly Selassie had it, um, Elvis Presley had it, Chuck Berry had it, um, and somebody that I never really cared for, he had it, uh, Richard Nixon, President Nixon, all right? I walk into a room, I could feel it, all right? Some people just have a certain charisma, a certain aura around them. Sometimes it may be a negative aura for some people, like Nixon, or it could be a positive aura, like Elvis or Selassie or Chuck Berry. All right, what was your experience with Celestia? Okay, so uh, when I was a kid, we lived in, uh, in uh, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, uh, for four years. Uh, normally, you go to a country for two years, uh, ask your assignment, and then you come home, and then you go to another country for two years. We liked Ethiopia so much, uh, my dad asked the State Department to give him another two years there. Why did you like Ethiopia so much? The people, uh, the culture, just... We just, we just liked it a lot. And, and we thought it would be great to, to extend our stay here. All right. Okay, so, um, you know, my, my dad's job at, uh, at the embassy, I said he was the second in command, um, was to foster better relations between the United States and the Ethiopian government. And so, of course, Selassie was, was the man, the emperor, and, you know, descendant of the Queen of Sheba and so forth and so on. So my, my, my father knew him, and um, I got to meet him. And you know, I was I was a young kid then. I have a picture of, of me and Selassie uh, as a kid. And um, so now, uh, fast forward about I don't know, um, maybe seven or eight years later. Now imagine all the people he meets in a year, which is a lot of people. It's pretty a lot of people. Yeah. Okay. Fast forward half a decade later. Um, we are in um, uh, Conakry, Guinea, all right? And um, Selassie comes to meet with, um, with uh, Sekuture, who is the president of, of, uh, of Guinea. And Kwame Nkrumah is there also. We, my father and a couple other American officials, and my mom and I, we go to the airport to greet Selassie as did many other ambassadors or whatever uh, from there, from the various embassies come. And they all are over there talking to Selassie. And I'm standing back here with my mom. So as I got done, he walked over to me. He walked over to me and started talking to me and says, I remember you. He remembered me from half a, uh, you know, I, I have aged in five years. Yeah, he remembered me. Um, the man was just, I mean, it's hard, it's hard to, to, to even describe, you know, uh, how, do you, how, you, how, you, how do you describe an aura to someone who has not seen one, but you know it when it's there, you know, some people see auras. Um, I didn't see like a glow around him, like some people can see colors around somebody. I didn't see that. I felt it. I felt it. What did your father say about the brilliance of Celestia when he interacted with him? I think that's probably why he wanted to stay another two years as, as part of the reason. Uh, this guy was a great man, you know, uh, he was done wrong. You know, the, the, the military killed him, you know, did a coup and, and took over. But um, I think Selassie, of course, at, the, at that age, I was not, you know, politi po politically cognizant of a lot of stuff. You know, I was just a kid, but um, you know, a lot that I learned about Selassie came afterwards as, as an older kid, you know, a teenager and, and, um, and in, in, into my adulthood, you know. But, um, but I know that he was revered by a lot of Ethiopians and revered by our country as well yeah. at the time. What did you, how did your experience 
with so, even though you were young, right? How did that experience differ from what you learned later? Because it seems like depending on who's writing the history, they could be pretty harsh on the narrative they gave yeah. us, Celestia. Yeah. Um, I just know what I felt the two times that I met him. Uh, it was just kind of, you know, electrifying. Um, as you call it, the aura. Some people call it the charisma or whatever. Just, just his presence. And at that time, I met a lot of people. Um, later, I would meet uh, King Jordan of, um, of uh, I mean, sorry, K King Hussein of Jordan. Um, he was a very nice man, very nice man. Um, he didn't have that charisma that, that Selassie had, but he was a nice man. But I don't know how to explain it because I didn't really understand it. And, and I was used, you know, I didn't realize the importance of meeting all these people. This is just part of my dad's job. Uh, sort of like, you know, if you, if you were the son of, um, uh, you, you mentioned reggae um, music a minute ago. So let's just say you were, you were the son of Bob Marley or Peter Tosh. You, you know, as a kid, you would meet other famous musicians, whether they were reggae or rock and roll or whatever. You know, you would meet them on festivals or wherever your, your dad played. But you wouldn't think anything of it. It's just the norm for you. Right. So that was the norm. Meeting these people was the norm for me.